Architects design our built environment. They design the homes we grew up in, the schools we learned in, the hospitals we visit if we're sick, the art museums we visit on the weekends, the government buildings, you get the point. <laughs> they design a building's functionality, safety features, along with aesthetics. This video was heavily requested from you guys, so here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is how to become a licensed architect within the United States. It's honestly, like if you are looking to get into the field of architecture, becoming a licensed architect for whatever reason is a super long and complex process, but I hope that this video can just give you a brief introduction as to the requirements because this is a long process and you have to be really dedicated to architecture to get your license to practice. So I am not a licensed architect, although I plan to become one maybe in three years time after I finish my master's degree at UPenn, but hopefully this video will give you a good insight as to how to become a licensed architect. So let's just get right into it. First of all, I just want to preface saying all of this information is perfectly laid out on several websites, like NCARB's website is going to be the primary website to reference, but regardless, I will just lay it out briefly for you guys in detail. This process is lengthy and challenging, okay? So please consider each point very carefully. There are four components to become a licensed architect within the US, the four being one, education, two, experience, three, examination, four, certification. One, education. You are going to need to attend a NAAB accredited university to get your bachelor's of science or bachelor's of art in architecture and also getting your MRH degree. I cannot stress this enough you are going to need to go to an accredited university, okay? Okay, you understand that? I think I've mentioned this in several, several videos. Please trust me on this. You can also go for what's called a professional degree. So if you're going for a bachelor's of science in architecture, which I have, that is considered a pre-professional degree, meaning that I was required to go to a graduate school after I graduated from Ohio State because it was a pre-professional degree. If you graduated, let's say from USC with a professional degree in architecture, you aren't going to go to grad school for this MArch component. So typically a bachelor's of architecture is about 168 credit hours and it basically just entails various components in architecture. So you're gonna have a structures component, construction component, studio component, absolute must and you're gonna have various other electives like I took a writing to class a photography class like like just random components I am also pursuing a M arch which is a master's of architecture so it requires I think it's around 30 graduate credit level credits um <laughs> I don't know how grad school works basically because you are at a more professional level you're gonna need less credits to graduate which is why it doesn't take four years to get a graduate degree however that being said it has has a various range. You could be going to grad school for one year, you could be going to grad school for four years. It all depends on your education level and your foundational understanding of architecture. You could also get a doctorate in architecture, but um, honestly, you don't really need to if you're just looking to practice. If you were trying to become a theorist in architecture, you still really don't need that doctorate degree, but if you want it, go for it. I'm full, like I'm here to support you. <laughs> Component number two is experience. So guys, you must document your experience as an architectural intern, um, if you work at a construction firm for a little bit, document that experience because you are going to need 3,740 hours of internship experience. This is about three years worth of internship experience. This experience must be under direct supervision of a licensed architect. So if you're working for an interior designer, um, it's probably not gonna count because they are looking for that um, supervision of a licensed architect and almost like that mentorship component and mentality. So you are going to need to cover seven facets of architecture including project management, practice management, programming and analysis, project planning and design, project development, documentation and construction and evaluation. There's a lot of components to architecture and actually constructing a building and I think this is just 
the way, the best way to learn is through practice. Almost think of these years like an apprenticeship. So NCARB, which is the National Council of Accrediting Board. National Council of Architectural Registration Boards, so close yet so far, has a IDP program. This stands for Intern Development Program, and it basically just divides all of your internship work into kind of elective hours. So throughout your internship years, you're going to be working on, like I mentioned, like site analysis and uh, building analysis, schematic design, zoning regulations, contract negotiations, and so on and so forth. This experience part may seem like a lot, but it is good to know. <laughs> Number three is going to be the examination process. So aspiring architects are going to be taking the ARE, which stands for Architect Registration Examination. It is a pass-fail test. Um, it's kind of expensive. It costs $250 per test. There are seven tests. Each test is regarding a specific aspect of the job. So construction documents, programming, planning, site planning, schematic design, structural systems, building systems, building design and construction systems, so on and so forth. To the people I know who took them, uh, it's just hell on earth. Like you don't want to retake it because it is so expensive and it's a lot of studying, but it is recommended if you are in, currently in grad school, take the structures exam right out the bat, like right out the door, right out the gate, just take it. That's probably going to be your peak knowledge of construction. And when you work in a firm, everything is going to be double checked by a structural engineer. So it is good that you know structures, don't get me wrong, but it is better to take this very hard test when you have like peak knowledge of <laughs> structures and physics just because I think the longer you go without studying physics or studying structures the harder it probably is number four licensure and <laughs> your certification so it's on a state-by-state -state basis so if I were to get a license I would try to get it where I would want to professionally practice. So if I wanted to stay in Philadelphia, I would get a license in the state of Pennsylvania. Architects can also opt in for a NCARB certification. It's supposed to make the process of getting another architecture practicing license in another state super easy, but you do have a couple other components and it just, it, it, it really only facilitates this process a little bit. So if you are applying but you kind of want to like work cross state which is a good thing to consider but if you think you're just strictly going to design like cookie cutter residential houses and units in the state of Oklahoma like it's probably not worth it that's completely on you and the last part of the whole process is maintaining your architecture license you need to continue education credits you need to constantly be educated on the new and upcoming innovations in your field, making sure that your mind stays fresh when practicing architecture. And just a fun fact, just for your point of reference, the average licensed architect, starting architect, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in May of 2019, licensed architects made a mean salary of $89,000. Okay, so I've, I've had this conversation a lot on my channel and I architecture is so expensive <laughs> to, to study it in school I'm probably taking out loans and yeah I don't to only really be making that <laughs> I would I would expect at least three figures but you know that's all that's a whole whole nother video